Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do measure of dispersion. Now what that means is we are going to do the range. The range means taking the highest number minusing the lowest number. Now if you look at this data you will notice that it is not in order. So what you must remember is that when you start put your data in order. It must go in ascending order from the lowest to the highest. So if we are doing this the easiest way to do it is to do it by a tree diagram. If we look we can see we are ranging between 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 and 80. 44, 31, 45, 21, 55, 34, 48, 49, 32, 65 and 80. Now the only one that's not in order is here by 30. So we got 31, 34 and 32. Let's take out this 4 and put it here. Remember to do your tree diagram you must have it in order. Now our data is in order. When you're doing measures of dispersion then this becomes a bit challenging to work with. It is better to have your data in order but in a way that it is set here. So if we look our first one is 21 then we have 31 then we have 32, 34, 44, 45, 48, 49, 55, 65 and 80. Now when we are working with this data it is easier to have it in a row as I had put it in here than it is to work in a tree diagram. But in both ways you can work out the data. Now what is range? Range is highest minus lowest. If you were going to use the tree diagram it would still be 80 minus 21. So we've got the range is equal to 80 minus 21 which is equal to 59. Now, after you've done the range, the next measure of dispersion is your Q1 and your Q3. Now, what is Q1 and Q3? In order to do this, you need to know how to get your median. Now, we had done median before. When we had done median, we had said it is the middle. Now if you count, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 data. Now when we are doing the Q1 and the Q2 and the Q3, Q2 is what you call median. But we are going to do two styles. Number one is when we have odd amounts of data and number two is when we have even amounts of data. Now when we count this one, we have 11. Right, remembering to get the median, we're going to say 11 divided by 2, which is equal to 5 and a half. And if you round it off, it's the sixth number. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now if you notice, we have one, two, three, four, five numbers on the left and we have five numbers on the, on the right. So once we took out the median, we've got five numbers on the left and we've got five numbers on the right. Now the Q1 is called the lower quartile. Now the lower quartile is in the name, it's saying quarter. Now when you have a median that is part of the data, which means the answer is in the data. Can you see 45 is the answer and it is in 
the data. Then, in order to do Q1, which is the lower quartile, or Q3, which is the upper quartile, we are going to eliminate a number. Now, when would we eliminate? We will only eliminate if the answer is part of the data. So, 45 is the answer and it's part of the data. So, it is the sixth number. We're not sharing. We're not saying 5 plus 6 divided by 2 as we had done in even numbers. So, when we have odd data and we see that the median is part of the data, like the 45 is part of the data, we eliminate the data before we going on to get Q1 and Q3. What we've done now is we've taken out 45. Now to get Q1, it is like getting the median of the remaining data on the left hand side. So what is the median? In this case, so we're looking at Q1, we're trying to get the median of the left hand side data. And for Q3, we're trying to get the median of the right hand side data. So once we've eliminated, we look on the left hand side and we see, okay, there's five term. So five divided by two is two and a half, which means that 32 is our answer. If you look on the right hand side, it's again five term. Five divided by two is two and a half, rounded off is three, so 55. So what is our Q1? Our Q1 is equal to 32. Our Q2 is going to equal to 45. And our Q3 is going to equal to 55. So when you're doing an odd number, because the answer is part of the median, the answer is part of the data, you eliminate the data. Now let us do one that's slightly different. Let us take one that has even data. If we're going to put it in order, again, you're going to use your tree diagram. We've got 44, 31, 45, 21, 35, 34, 48, 49, 32, and 28. Now, if we put our data in order, 21, 28, 31, 32, 34, 35, 44, 45, 48, 49, right. Now count how many we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. To calculate the range is easy. Range, we're going to say highest minus lowest, so it's going to be 49 minus 21. Right. Now, how do we get the Q2? Always start with Q2. Q2 is the middle. Now, we've got 10 term. If you say 10 divided by 2, it's 5. From your previous work, you know that if it's an even number, when you divide by 2, you must take that number and the next number and divide it by 2 to get the answer. So the same thing, we've got 10. If you take 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 2, which means I'm taking 34 plus 35 divided by 2, which is going to give me 34,5. Now the answer is here in the middle and the answer is 34,5. The answer is not part of the data. It is in the middle of the data. Now when it is not part of the data, so when you have even numbers, you don't eliminate. So when we have even numbers, you don't eliminate. You basically, you add your Q2. But now when we are looking for our Q1, we are going to look on our left hand side. And for our Q3, we're going to look on our right hand side, but we're not eliminating anything. 
Now look, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 divided by 2 is 2 and a half. So our answer is 3 and that is our answer, 31. And if we do the same thing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 2 is 2 and a half. So it will give us 45. So what is our Q1? Our Q1 is 31 and our Q3 is 45. You are not eliminating when the answer is not part of the data. Now I want to do one more example. Let us look at this one. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 terms. If I wanted my Q2, it's going to be 12 divided by 2, which is 6, which means I'm taking the 6th and 7th term. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7th term. So I'm going to say the 6th term plus the 7th term divided by 2 will give me my Q2. which is equal to 39,5. Now remember, because it's an even number, we are cutting it in the middle and our answer is 39,5. Now, look at the amount of data I have left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you have 6 terms, to calculate Q1, I would say 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So which means I have to take the third and the fourth and divide it by 2. So remember, every time it's even, I'm going to add and divide by 2. So my answer is 31 plus 32 divided by 2, which is equal to 31,5. And my Q3, okay, I'm taking the third and the fourth term after my average, after the Q2. So it will be 48 plus 49 divided by 2, which is 48,5. So what is my answer? For my Q1, I have it as 31,5. For my Q2, I have it as 39,5. And for my Q3, I have it as 48,5. And then my highest and my lowest, so if I want to do my range, it's going to be 55 minus 21, which is equal to 34. So my range is equal to 34. Thank you for watching.